Hey guys, it's Linda Winter and I have another towel topper. I tell you, I am kind of addicted to these things. Once you make one, they kind of get like a lot of fun. So I've filmed two videos already on towel toppers. One was the mask keeper template. That's this guy here. And if you have watched it, then you might have remembered or might have seen that I ended up putting in a towel backwards. So I want to show you real quick what it is that we need to do. This is the opening. This is going to be the front. So let me show you what I did. I put the towel in backwards this way. There's no writing here. If this is the front side where I'm going to have the button or the snap or the Velcro or whatever, then I need to flip this over and we're going to stitch this down inside of there. So basically, I've got my folds all ready to go. We'll talk about folds here too, but I showed you a couple different options. That goes inside and then I would pin. And because I stitched this, and I stitched this at the same time, they match up. So I don't have to worry about when I stitch this inside about stitching on the front and missing on the back. That's the cool thing about the template. But this is the Mask Keeper template. So I've shown you that one. So if you haven't seen that, be on the lookout for that. Then I showed you this one. This one is my favorite. And I told you that I made this. I didn't make it. I was so excited about it that I wanted to claim that I made it. Lisa made this. Lisa came over and she and I were sewing on Sunday and she made this for me. I love this because it lets you feature two fabrics that coordinate with your towel. And then then you can place your button wherever it is you want or your snap or your velcro or whatever it is too so then i have this template now this template here is my little dress now i said that last one was my favorite maybe only because i haven't made that many of this so let's talk about mask keeper first the tab top was the second one and this little dress is done with this. I want to show you really quickly, version one, version two. Here's Monkey. Monkey wants to see two. So I'm going to place these on top of each other and I want to flip them over and have you see. Do you see how right here, <laughs> right here, that difference makes all the difference when you're cutting. It's going to give you a more gradual curve. And let me show you the difference there. I'm going to do this in a video. So don't worry about Monkey being in the way and figuring out what to do because this isn't the video where I'm showing that. But look at that gradual curve. Why? It's easier to cut. It's easier to sew. You can see this curve here. So this is just a little more gradual. If you bought the version one and you want to get the version two, call me because I have a super good deal for you to be able to get the second one too. All right, so back to what we're doing today. Today we are doing the towel topper with the apple core. So I mentioned the version one and the version two, and this is another one where I have a version one and version two. I'm going to take these and I'm going to place these right on top of each other. And I want you to see, and again, Monkey is just wanting to be a part of this right now. I want you to see right here, this is the version one, and it's a little bit smaller than the version two. Why does that matter? It just gives you a little bit more room to put your towel inside of there. So if you've got a little bit heavier towel, you're not fighting so much. The curve is a little more gradual, not a whole lot, but basically this is just a little bit bigger, version two. And same thing, if you bought the version one, call me and I'll give you a really cool deal as to how you can upgrade to the version 2. You can keep the version 1, but I'll tell you a really quick way to do it. The other thing that I did too, you can see I've got them upside down. Let me flip them a fussy cut frame. If you guys know fussy cut frames, the fussy cut frame lets me fussy cut my fabric. I don't have anything special here. I mean, it's cool. It's for a kid, but it's not anything that I really want to feature. So I'm going to grab this fabric. I've got a lot of this fabric and instead of cutting a piece off, I don't want to lose any of those turkeys. So I'm going to place this here and I'm going to take my fussy cut frame. When I take this fussy cut frame, I'm going to look to see this is the top. This is where that fold is going to be right here. So what I want to do is turn this so I can see and I can move my fabric or I can move my body and I can see that turkey being placed the way that I want. This is the center here. I've got a seam allowance here, I've got a seam allowance here, and I need to add a button, a snap, Velcro, whatever. So you don't want to do this where the button or the snap is going to go right on his legs. So maybe give yourself enough room. When you find what it is you want, 
we're going to place the template inside. We're fussy cutting with this, so we're viewing first. We're finding what it is that I want. You can see that little turkey there peeking out from the top. That would be where the fold is. So you decide what it is. The cool thing about the fabrics that you have out there, they are meant to be featured, fussy cut. So this template that I have for this, the fussy cut frame that goes with this, I've got a ton of fussy cut frames. So if you are new to fussy cut frames, you wanna go back and see what else is there. You notice what I did, I'm holding this template down, that fabric is staying in place and I put that inside of here. I'm gonna lift the fabric and that allows me to remove this. Now, because I want a seam allowance up here, I'm gonna cut myself a little bit of this fabric. I'm gonna cut around, I'm gonna cut here, and I'm gonna cut around. I wanna cut all that off so I can get rid of all of this stuff. We're gonna ignore this for a minute because I want a seam allowance in there. So I'm cutting around, I'm turning this, and I'm just gonna cut backwards toward me and I'm gonna cut around. Remember this has the no slip material on the back, so that means all the cutting that I do is accurate and consistent. I don't have to fool with placing this and tracing around and all of those details. All right, so I want to make sure that this gives me my seam allowance. What's my seam allowance? A quarter inch. So I can take any template I'm going to grab, actually, this guy here. This is my can cozy. If you want to make things to go over those cans at the holidays, especially if everybody's outside drinking, you know, whatever, um, all the, you know, sodas and all that stuff, then you can use this. But notice what I'm doing. I'm using it to give me my seam allowance. This is a generous quarter of an inch, more like a three-eighths of an inch. No big deal. I'm going to show you what I like to do, though as to how to know where that seam allowance is. I would cut one just like I did there. I would have left this on, I would have cut another, and the two of them I would have stacked right sides or wrong sides together and then cut. So that gives me that seam allowance. But let me show you what I did instead with this. I cut the fusible. SF-101 is the one that I like. So I cut my fusibles. And if you want to cut your fusibles, go ahead and cut. I've got a stack here somewhere, go ahead and cut a whole bunch of fusibles. If you're gonna be making a lot of these, six and a half by 10 inches. The six and a half by 10 inches is going to give you enough. Do you see how when I put this here, do you see how that gives me enough so I can cut around this? Cut exactly from the fusible, this template, and then when you press it on there, line these up, that gives you the seam allowance. You're gonna be stitching right here. So when you line this one up, and this one up. Clip, clip, clip if you want to. Pin, pin, pin if you want to. It's totally up to you. But that's your stitching line right there. What that's going to give you is the towel topper, the perfect size with that seam at the top. Let me show you what I mean. Right here. When you look at this, you can see if my cat was my boss, my life would be perfect. Not really, because all my kitties are here and they like to come in and kind of mess things up. But you know how it is when you've got pets. That seam right there, and that's my fabric on the back side, that allows me to get that seam allowance where I want it. Now you decide if you want a seam allowance in the middle. I had scraps here, so I added a seam allowance there. But you can, with these, once you sew these together, imagine sewing them together, we're gonna line these up, you would have a seam allowance right here that would take care of that. Okay, so that's an option for you. So that will allow you to fussy cut. And now I've got my turkey. You can see here when we look at this, you notice I didn't put anything in the center. I've got the pumpkin. I've got a turkey coming from in the side. I've got the turkey there. And remember, that's where the seam is right there. So that gives me enough. And I want to talk about fusibles for a minute. Can you see that little bit of sheen there? I want to remind you guys that if you're using SF-101, any kind of applique, whatever it is where there's a fusible, by all means, get yourself one of these. I now have a much bigger one. Why do I like the bigger one? Because imagine I'm doing a big project, this goes down, this would go here. Imagine that didn't have it on the back, this would go right here, that didn't have it on the back. 
And then what you want to do is press that over, fold it over, and then press, press, press. Then the important thing, which is how I got this, the important thing to not have that happen, because when you're pressing all of this stuff that's here, all of this stuff that's here, I usually will trim around, trim around a little bit so I don't have all that excess, but it leaves gunk, it leaves residue on here. To get rid of that residue before you go to press, take anything sharp and flat, and just push, push, push. Now what I do at home is I do this with the trash can right down below me and I'm pushing towards me because I want all that residue. See how there's a little bit there? Maybe, maybe on the other side. All that residue I don't want on my ironing board. And remember, you're not ironing on your cutting mat anyway. But all of that stuff will stick and it'll get you this result. That's not what you want. If I really were going to do that, I would have to do that one over. I don't want to waste my fabric, so take your time and do that as well. Now, these guys here, let's talk towels for a minute. You've got so many choices for towels, and my favorites are these lightweight towels. You can find these everywhere, Target and Walmart and, you know, um, um, Kohl's and e everywhere. They've got these. You can see, hello, gorgeous. We can place this on there. Eat, drink, and be thankful. Look at this. Do you see how right here my eat, drink, and be thankful is cut off? So that's not going to work with a curve. What will this work with? It'll work beautifully with the towel topper. You can see how I would still have enough towel. So when you're picking your towels, make sure you're thinking about which, temp which template works best with that style. You can see here, eat ham. That's cool. The pie is the limit. All right, so you've got all of these options here. What I want to point out is I've got a saying here, no saying here. I'm going to use this for some other project that may not be Thanksgiving, that may not be Halloween, that may be a little kid's room. Because why not put one of these in a kid's room so when they're doing their crayons and their messy stuff, they can use this to wipe their hands off. Why not put one of these in the bathroom? I'll show you a better choice of the towel material, but put one in the bathroom on the shower door so that they can use these to wipe their hands off. But see how cute that is? So you've got no additional saying here. It's just one on the back, one on the front. It's, again, you can see leaves here. The leaves are perfect for all those fall fabrics that you have. And that one, again, doesn't have anything. But a lot of the towels will have a saying on the back. That gives you a twofer. But this gives me a twofer as well. And sometimes it sure is nice not to have a saying. So when you're looking at your towels, be thinking about what it is you want to be doing with that. All right, so you get the idea of how we would sew that one together. I'm not going to do that one. What I want to do is show you one that I mentioned for kids. So I've got this, and I want to show you the traditional way that you can cut. So let me move some of this stuff around, and we'll get this ready so you can see me cutting. All right, so I've got fabric, and I've got fabric. Right here, I've got the selvage. So I want to make sure that that selvage is not going to be affecting anything that I do. So when I fold this over, I want to make sure on this side right here, you can see I'm going to line that up to that line right here. And basically, when I flip this over, you can see that's about where my line is there, too. Okay, if we're going to do the apple core, I'm going to be using version 2. And by the way, they come like this. You can see it's hard to see that engraving. It says version 2. The original one only said apple core. I went in and colored that. The new one, the one that I like, the one that has the fussy cut, this comes as a set now, it says version two. Use one of my metallic Sharpies to go color that in. You can color it in if you want or you can just write V2. And this will tell you it's the apple core shape just by looking at it. So. Let's get that out of the way too. All right, I don't need to do any fussy cutting here. I do want to keep that on the fold because I want this to be super fast and super easy. What have I done? Right sides together, I want to swap and I want to do wrong sides together. Why? Because when I go to cut, everything is going to be so much faster. I don't even have to flip them. All right, so we're going to again look to see that selvage right there. I want to make sure that I have enough fabric for that template to fit. All right, we're going to pull this down a little bit. I don't want to lose anything. And I'm going to scoot this down here. 
because this is basically wasted fabric. You know, the easiest thing to do is just cut it off. So you don't have to deal with any of that. But I'm not gonna take the time right now to do it. All right, I've got a fold in here. So I am gonna go ahead and cut that off. Let's go ahead and cut this off so we don't have to fool with that. If you've watched my videos before, you know on camera how good I am at doing the don't do what I say, or don't do what I do, do what I say. So we don't want any of that. Okay, so you can see right here, that's where we're gonna be looking at. I can line those edges up because they are lined up evenly for the most part. And then we're gonna look at this template right here. And I've got just barely enough fabric. I'm gonna line that up to the edges. I'm gonna place this template along and I'm gonna start right at the edge and I'm gonna cut off. I'm gonna turn the template and I'm using the 45 millimeter. You can use the 28 millimeter if you want to, but because we're doing four layers, notice what I did, I cut off and I turned that template. I cut off and I turned that template. You can continue to cut and turn the template as you go. Totally up to you. Same thing here, I can cut off or I can turn the template as I cut. It's really how you've learned to use the rotary cutter and if you've struggled with the rotary cutter, then it's gonna make your life a whole lot easier. Okay, so we are ready, when I open this up, to go to the sewing machine. All right, I've got fusible on one, not on the other. Why? I find sometimes the fusible on two of them just makes this a little bit stiff, maybe more stiff than you want. But honestly, you have to decide on your fabrics. Some of the fabrics that I use, I've got heavier weight fabrics. I've got duck cloth and, um, you know, an outdoor fabric, home deck, those kinds of things. If you're doing that, then you're really not going to want to have anything, you know, fusible wise there. So you decide what it is you want. And you notice here, I've got some of the fabric, but I don't have any of the um, interfacing, the fusible, and that's fine. All right, so we'll go to the sewing machine. And again, I don't really clip a whole lot. All right, there's no front or back on this, so I don't have to worry about which side I'm gonna be leaving as the opening. Now, what we wanna do is we're gonna stitch all the way around, but when we stitch one of the sides, we're gonna increase our stitch length to the longest you'll be able to do on your sewing machine because we're gonna finger press that and then we're gonna rip those seams out. So we're gonna do those first. Actually, we're gonna do not first. All right, we're at the sewing machine. So we're here at the sewing machine and I've got my seam allowance set for, let's go ahead and I'm gonna fold this back a little bit. I'm gonna fold this back here. This is something that I didn't show you in the last video and I think it's a nice little tip. This is the side that I'm gonna be leaving with the longer seam allowance or, or stitching with the longer seam allowance and see how I folded that back a little bit because that's gonna allow me to have a nicer finish there. All right, as we stitch, let me get that scooted over a little bit. As we stitch, I'm gonna use about a quarter inch seam allowance. And my stitch length is set at a two something, whatever it is you like to sew, 2.5, 2.7, 2.9, totally up to you. When I get to this edge, I'm gonna go ahead and normally you'd have needle down. I don't have that set today on my sewing machine. Needle down just helps you turn the curves a little bit. And you'll wanna grab pinking shears or scissors, those nice Martelli precision scissors, whatever sharp scissors you have to be able to snip. We don't have a whole lot of extreme curves on this, so it's not as big a deal here. All right, when I get closer to this side, I'm gonna fold that fabric down a little bit, about the same amount that I folded on the other side. And I wanna make sure that those edges are kind of lined up evenly. And I'm just holding those with my fingers. All right, and I'm gonna put my needle down because I lost that bottom one. And I'm just folding that under. All right, and we're gonna back tack a little bit. Okay, now what we wanna do, I'm gonna come back to my cutting table and we're gonna snip, snip, snip here. You can do the pinking shears again if you want to. Again, there's not a whole lot to this and because I didn't have the two layers of the fusible, it's not that big of a deal. But not only do I wanna cut here, but I also wanna cut where I have that opening. We wanna stitch that closed 
but I want to take care of those edges that I folded over. Okay, so what we want to do here is that a little bit. Let's get rid of that clip and that a little bit. And now what I want to do is hold this here. All right, so right here, I want to hold that. Notice what I'm doing with my fingers. I'm just pulling that over because I'm going to stitch here. I don't care about the edges because remember, we're going to rip these stitches out anyway and we're going to be stitching. Let me show you what that is. That's going to be giving me this right here, this area where I'm tucking that in. So I want to hold that together and I'm going to stitch along here. When I get to this side, I'm going to again pull these back. I folded them over, what that's going to do is just give me an easier edge at the corner when I do those corners. Okay, let's get back to the sewing machine. And now we're going to increase our stitch length, the longest that you have available at your sewing machine. And mine is a 5-0. Let's get those threads underneath. And again, I'm just going to kind of finger those a little bit and I can put that needle down where I want it to go. Now this should be a good quarter inch, if not a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And right here I'm just going to reach under a little bit. All right. Now what we're going to do, we can either press at the iron or we can use this cool pressing tool and it's kind of up to you. We're not snipping this. We definitely don't want to snip this. But what we want to do is one side first. And I'm just using my fingers here. I want you to see I can use my fingers, but I can also go in and use this tool. Again, the wheel just makes it flat and consistent. It just, uh, it's not going to create any puckers or any folds by accident. If you've done another tool, if you've used another tool when you're pressing seams open like this, sometimes those tools actually create little kind of uh, creases that you don't really want. All right, so we're going to press and press and press and press. And when I get to where I'm pretty good with this, then I'm going to go ahead and press with my iron. You'll take the time to do this well. I'm not taking the time here on camera, but you get the idea. I love the little iron. If you haven't set up a pressing station right next to your sewing machine, the wool mats are amazing. You can press on these, you can pin in these, you can do a whole bunch of cool things with these. So they're definitely worth getting one. If you don't have a station set up, go ahead and set up an area for you. Now the other thing you can do too, if you want, is you can use the um, tape. I showed in one of the other videos, the Mask Keeper video, the Dritz tape. And I love, love, love that stuff. And this actually would be a good project to use that tape. It's kind of up to you. Do you have it in stock? Do you have a lot of it? Do you want to use it all? It's really up to you. All right, so what are we going to do? You can use your, I'm going to go here, you can use your seam ripper and go in and rip and rip and rip. If you're not confident with that, you can go in with your tweezers and pick and pick. And you can see when I'm using the tweezers, what it's giving me is a longer thread that I can then grab and pull. So what we want to do is pull out those stitches And then we're going to tuck everything inside of here once we've got this nice finished edge. Now there's a bunch of different ways to do this, so it's totally up to you. I'm going to go ahead and pull that open. That's going to get rid of some of those threads. And we're going to go back over to our pressing mat. And we're now going to spend a little bit more time pressing this the way we want. You can do this on this side or you can turn this right sides out and do it from there. Right sides out is going to give you the look that you're really going to get so you can see if you've got everything even, if you need to do a better job of pressing. So that might not be a bad idea too. So we'll do that in just a second so you can see. All right, when we do the, the turning, I'm going to go back over here. 
And you want to use whatever turning tool you have. And that might be fingers, that might be scissors, that might be a uh, knitting needle, whatever it is. G and Sherry's mommy stick, for those of you that know G and Sherry, totally up to you. But you want to have something. For now, I'm just using a fingernail inside of there. And what I want to do is run my finger along. Can you see how I'm on that seam? I'm just running that along because I want those seams to be open. I'll deal with the corners in a minute. And I'm going to pull a little bit and pull a little bit and pull a little bit. Again, I'll deal with the corners in a minute, but we're just pulling to get those seams open. I don't want to press this till I know I've gotten those seams nice the way I want it. For the corners, I'm going to tape it, take a sharper pair of scissors. Don't do too sharp because you know what happens when you do that. And I'm just poking out. You can trim those corners. It's actually a really good thing to do to trim off that excess at the corner, especially on the side that you really did sew down so that it gives it a nicer finish. That's going to be the one that's showing because the other side is the bottom where the towel is going to be tucked in. So, you know, definitely take the time to do that. All right, so now I'm just going to kind of finger it a little bit. And again, that roller, the seam roller, that's a good thing to use here too. So you can see how this is starting to tape shape. I still have to push that one out a little bit. I still need to give a little bit more of a press there, but you get the idea. All right, what are we going to do? We're going to go, whoops, I don't know if you saw, I just poked my, myself, hopefully, there it did it again. So that are scissors that are not quite so sharp or better. I had another pair over here and I don't know what I did with them. Guess what? That always happens when I'm on camera. All right, let's give this a press. And then in a minute, we'll go look at this edge that needs to be the towel tucking in. And then I want to talk about towels for a minute and some of the options that are weight, the towel weight. So that towel weight makes all the difference. I talked about the tea towels that I like so much because it's a really nice weight, but they don't always dry your hands the best. And again, if this is for kids, put this in the bathroom on that shower bar, then when the kids come in and they're making a mess, they've got a cute towel that reminds them not only to dry their hands, but more importantly, wash their hands. You know, if you've got kids that don't do that, this is kind of a cool thing to be able to give them and encourage them. Anything that we can do to reinforce those good habits early on, that's not a bad thing at all. All right, so I've done the one side, I'm doing the second side. And then I'm going to grab some of the towels. I want to show you the towel that I've chosen to go with this one because I think it's a cute one for kids. But I think it's a good one in general for most of your projects. All right. So this is the towel that I want to do. So imagine that. How cute is that going to be? But I want to pull over some towels. And right here and here. I've got some towels. Okay, so remember this. This is one of those towels that has the text on the front and the text not on the back. This is a heavier weight than the towel that we're working with right now. This is a little bit lighter. The other towels that I had, much lighter. These towels, these are great for cleaning, for dusting, for those kinds of things. Anything that you want to stick to, but they're not really great for drying. But you have there and there on the front and back. Look how cute that would be with do the mask out of this. Even though this is a towel, you can do the towel topper out of that too. But look at these. How cute is that? Or how cute is that? This is a towel. So towels don't have to be just for the base. The towels can be for the towel topper too. But I think these are both really, really cute. It just kind of gives you that really fun feel you know, for the holidays. This is another one, very lightweight, and you see there's text on one side, graphics, but no text on the back side. So another cool thing too. And then this one, same thing with this little guy here. So imagine one of these here or one of these here, but look how much lighter weight this is. You know what kind of towels you like to use and you know what the job requires. I want to show you a towel towel. This is a towel that has lace down here on one side. This is the bathroom towel. If you want to do a towel like this, 
then you've got a couple options. I'm going to recommend, let's see if I can find it. I'm going to recommend that you do this guy. Why? It's a lot easier to tuck in straight than it is to tuck in a curve. If you are going to do that, when you're cutting off, do I want this here or do I want that there? Is it a practical towel? has some stains on it and you say <laughs> I'm making this to get her done and this is not pretty but practical or is this going to be pretty and you want to go in and add some buttons some lace some trim some whatever um, an applique that you've ironed on something from your Cricut machine but this is a thirsty towel much much heavier so it's going to work a whole lot better with the tab top towel topper you can imagine trying to do those folds inside of something like this. So really up to you, but that's what I recommend. Okay, so we're gonna use this towel. Another towel option, you've got ribbons on here, no ribbon on here. Do I want, if this is for a girl, then the ribbon would be kinda cool. But if I'm doing it for a boy, you know, I mean, maybe a boy wouldn't mind the ribbon, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the other side. So it's kind of um, more practical. All right, so you've got a couple ways to cut your towels in half. You guys do whatever it is you want. I'm just going to give a good press there. I'm going to open that up. I can see that press, and I'm going to grab one of my rulers. Of course, I don't have the no-slip ruler that I want, so this is long enough. So this is my 2.5 by 15 um, by 15 and a half. Some of the towels are wider, so if you cut, you would have to cut and then move again. So we're going to line this up. Towels are not always even. So when you go to cut, you know, it's not going to matter because we're folding that up. But look at this. It's not even at all. Do you see that? So I'm going to go with the fold that I put in there from the crease. And we're just going to cut that. All right, so we're taking the side with the ribbon and tossing that. All right, here's our guy. Fold in half. Give that a little press. There are markers. Here we go. That are heat markers. This guy here. Let's see if I can get, oh, there's a little tab on there. These guys here, they will come off with heat. And I can barely get that to show, but you get the idea right there. You can put a pin in there. You can do whatever it is you want. I'm going to just put a mark with a pen instead of a pin. All right, right there. And you can fold to here. Folding is totally up to you. I want this to be as simple as possible. So if you're here and here we fold it in half, there's Monkey coming to join us. I'm going to fold this over. I'm going to look to see how much space do I have in here. I've got a lot. I can simply fold this over if I want to and fold this over if I want to and then look to see I folded way too much. So we're going to move this and let's see if Monkey's going to settle down or if she's going to move on. Monkey, little girl, can you see there? Right there and you can see I've got a gap here and a gap here so I need to let go a little bit here. I'm going to grab a clip or a pin. And I'm going to do about the same amount here. You can do this at an angle if you want to, or you can do this straight. You decide the look that you want. And the cool thing is it's your towel. You do whatever it is you want, and you make it whatever is easiest for you. You'll want to put a pin and a pin on the back. You can see how I don't have that lined up right. I would take the time to line that up. But with Monkey here, I'm not taking my chances because who knows when she's going to hop up on where we are. I want to make sure that I have the sides inside the edges. And again, if we had text on our towel, this, I don't know if you can see, I've got a lot of towel inside of there. So if I had text on here and I put that that far, that gives me that edge and that edge, then I may want to fold my towel a little differently so that it does take advantage of putting a little bit of a crease. I'm okay with that there. I do want to grab some straight pins though because to me there's a time and place for pins and a time and place for the clips. And I'm going to put a pin in here. And because I'm left-handed, the way I pin is totally wrong and different and a pain, but I'm going to do it the way I do it. All right, and you can see I've got a gap here, right here. I've got a gap here. 
open your towel up and adjust it for that gap just a little bit more just so that it sits in there but you can see monkey is right on top of me i don't really mind that look either so i'm okay with that all right we're going to go to the sewing machine and what i need to do is make sure that this corner where we tucked that in and i've got a pin there so let me move that a little bit and while i'm pinning i'm going to turn this on the back side too I'm going to put a pin in the middle for now. Actually, let's put a pin on the front side because I certainly don't want that interfering. Let's put a pin a little bit further down just to keep that there. Okay, so what we want to do is if you've got some kind of a tool, a finger press or something else where you can push that inside, grab that and we would tuck that inside. We're gonna to go to the sewing machine, we're gonna stitch that down, we're gonna stitch around, we're gonna stitch around. All right, so we're at the sewing machine. I'm gonna sew in one direction. I'm removing the pins as I go. One pin is going one way. Another pin is going the other way. So I'm gonna leave that pin there. And if you wanna double check the back side, you can do that too. It's up to you to make sure that you're catching that on the back. All right, let's take a look. All right, so we've caught the front, we've caught the back. Let's get rid of this. Let's fold this over. And we've got a fold and we've got a fold. Now you've got to decide, do you want to find a funky button? Do you want to add Velcro? Do you want to add a snap? It's for kids, so probably Velcro would be really good to be able to do that. All right, I think I'm going to stop here because Monkey is going to be invading all of this, but look right along that edge. We've caught that and we're good to go. I want to come back and show you a couple that I have on the bar in the back and we can look at different placements. You can see here I've got a button. Here I've got a snap. Look at where the snap is. I didn't want to put it down too low. Well, let's pull this over in front of us. <laughs> we wanted to make sure that you got to see how these hung on a towel. This is for the bathroom. This is, let's pull it that way. This is one that you can buy for your bathroom. You can buy to put in your kitchen. I actually bought one of these to put in front of my sink because I'm having such a good time actually using these. So you can see here, I've got a button, I've got a snap, I've got a button. Look at the placement that I have here with that gingerbread. I didn't do a good job of placing that. When I made this, this was the first one that I made with the new template. I didn't think anything about other than fussy cutting to have this, my peppermint up there, and to have that. How much cuter would it have been if I'd had room here for a button or here for a snap? So this could have gone up a little bit higher. So make sure that your placement when you're doing your fussy cutting takes that into consideration. Same thing, I love the sip sip. I could have put a snap right down here. I decided to feature it right up here so you can see snap, snap. And you can make your fabrics be on the front, on the back, pretty. On the inside, pretty. I did pretty here, I did pretty here. But I did some white fabric that I have that has a, you know, a nice embossed kind of a look that just goes along with it. But I'm not wasting more of this fabric because I want to make another towel topper. Same thing with this. I have lots of coffee fabrics, but it's not going to show. So what's the point? This one right here, I love the heart button. And I love that this is red and burgundy. So I decided I'm going to do the red for the lining because I just think that's really cute. And I'm going to do the heart for the button. So, all right, guys, this was my Apple Core towel topper. You can go to my website to find the version two and the version one if you want that as well. Winterdesigns.com, head to products and templates. When you click on products and templates, go to that search box and search box there, you can type in topper, T-O-P-P-E-R, and you're gonna see a bunch of the towel toppers. The bundle, some of the different features that I have. You can see there's the oops, that's the version one of the towel dress. There's the Apple Core version two. You can see I've got more kits. There's a bundle that gives you all four of the templates too. And there's the version two with the fussy cut. So having that fussy cut to me makes all the difference in the world. So it's on sale, you can get that 
that as a bundle. But again, the best thing to do, honestly, because your fabrics are going to tell you what really works best, is to get the four towel toppers together. So the towel topper mask keeper, the towel topper, this guy here, the towel topper is the tab top, the towel topper little dress, and that's the version two. And this one, my apple core with the fussy cut frame. And I've got a coupon code that I put on my Facebook page, so make sure you go look for that too. If you do my Facebook, you can find me at winterdesigns.com, or Winter Designs for Sewing and Quilting. And then head over to my YouTube, it's one word, Linda Videos. Linda Space Videos takes you to a bunch of other people and none of them are me. So go look for my Linda Videos, one word. Thanks so much for being here. I hope you've caught the bug too. These are so fun, so easy. And you can crank these out because they make great gifts. They're great just to make for yourself but they're great things to sell too. So thanks for watching guys. Mm -hmm.